Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. More military UFO footage released. Air Race Classics seeking racers past and present to share their stories. And Canadian Air Show faces financial challenges. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 16th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Are they out there really? Video captured by the crew of an F-A-18 Hornet in 2015 has been released by the U.S. government. That appears to show a UFO streaking over the Atlantic Ocean off the eastern U.S. coast. The video was released by the Stars Academy, which did not disclose how it obtained the declassified footage, but said it is available through the Freedom Information Act process. In the video, the pilot could be heard saying, What the... is that thing? The weapons officer could be heard saying, Oh my gosh, dude. Allegedly, the jet was flying over the east coast of the U.S. at FL-250. This video, along with two others which became public last year, indicate that there is evidence of the existence of aircraft far superior to anything possessed by the United States or its allies. Wrote Christopher Mellon, a former defense official in the George W. Bush and Clinton administrations and an advisor to the Stars Academy. After the break, Rosec to manufacture TVS-2 DTS light aircraft. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Rostec State Corporation is manufacturing an all-composite variant of the AN-2 biplane, called the TVS-2 DTS. The airplane will be built at the facilities at the Ulan Ud Aviation Plant, a member of the Russian Helicopters Holding Company. The aircraft will be utilized for the regional passenger operations, initially in Siberia and the Russian Far East, where a new airline company will be established for these purposes. The U.S. Army has awarded a contract valued at approximately $273 million to Airbus for the delivery of 35 additional UH-72A Lakota helicopters. The contract includes the UH-72A production aircraft, associated technical and flight operator manuals, and program management. This procurement is broken into two configurations. 17 UH-72A Lakotas for the initial entry rotary wing mission at Fort Rucker and 18 UH-72A Lakotas for the observer controller mission at the Army's combat training centers. The FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation has released a draft environmental impact statement to evaluate the potential environmental impacts that may result if FAA issues a launch site operator license to the Camden Board of Commissioners to operate a commercial space launch site called Spaceport Camden on the Atlantic seaboard in Camden County, Georgia. Army Air Force's 1st Lieutenant William W. Shank, killed during World War II, has now been accounted for. On November 13, 1943, Shank was a pilot with a 338th Fighter Squadron, 55th Fighter Group, 66th Fighter Wing, 8th Fighter Command, 8th Air Force flying as P-38 on a mission to Bremen, Germany. Shank was killed after engaging in fierce enemy action. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
During Women's History Month, the Air Race Classic, the annual all-women cross-country airplane race, is announcing a new campaign to educate the public about the role of women in aviation by seeking past and present racers to share their stories. Meet the Racer Mondays will introduce some of the bold competitors who have flown the Air Race Classic and or the predecessor races, the Powder Puff Derby and all women's transcontinental air race. Influential Women Wednesdays will profile women, both historical figures and present-day pioneers, who have made significant contributions to aviation and to promoting women in the field. The ARC is reaching out to current and former racers for help. To participate and meet the Racers Monday, racers can send a brief description of why they started flying, what made them get involved in racing, something fun or interesting they've learned while racing, and where they are now in their flying to publicity at airraceclassic.org. To nominate a subject for Influential Women Wednesdays, send a description of who she is, what type of flying she has done, and what her significant contribution was or is. After these messages, Canadian Air Show faces financial challenges. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The Vanderhoof British Columbia International Air Show may fall victim to funding cuts following a change in provincial government. Tom Bolmberg, co-chair of the popular event, said that the show is just not seeing the level of support from the British Columbia government that we've had in the past. Bulmer said that organizers have reached out to multiple people to make an appeal to the government to restore funding for the show, but so far they have been unsuccessful. Among those contacted was a tourism events program, which said that while the show would be an eligible applicant for the program, the costs associated with the operational expenses, such as fuel, accommodation, and performers, are not eligible expenses under the TEP. Your event could apply for funding related to promotion, advertising, and broadcasting activities. But the show, which has an overall budget of $200,000, is receiving support from the local business community, which has been making private donations in an effort to preserve the event. Up to about $60,000 has already been received in private donations. This year's event is scheduled for Questional on August 4th. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne and Manned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.